Hello everyone, welcome back to the Codasat. In today's episode, we are going to deep dive into another exciting project and exploring its core features, technology, use cases, and also the logic behind it. Uh, what this type of project. So, if you are ever wonder how such projects come to life or how this type of project is built, then this video is for you and this is going to more helpful for you. Okay, so make sure to stick around till the end to get the uh, or complete or valuable insight from this video okay so let's dive in and now i will invite ganesh to present this project and explain it in more detail so hi ganesh now you can explain your project and first you can present your screen then you can uh, explain about the project yeah so i'm presenting my screen okay so this is a project about signal background classification. Uh, it is uh, based on particle physics where the, some scientists have conducted the experiment and through that experiment, in that experiment, they have collided the particles and through that particles, mm -hmm. they have found the new uh, particles and our job and their job is to, to identify that which part to, uh, to uh, find out the special particles, which are the signals and some other particles mm -hmm. that two will occur simultaneously and they have to differentiate which are called background. So we have to differentiate between the signal and the background particles. So the particle of interest is signal and the particle that we do not want to interact uh, with the signal particles are the background particles. So the unwanted particles are the background particles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we need to, uh, so in this data set, we have 7.5 million rows for the uh, test 10 data set and 3.5 million rows for the test data set. So it is a big data project and uh, we have used PySpark library, which is a Python library for Apache Spark. And uh, yeah, and uh, it is uh, used for the data processing for large data set. And then if you move on to the code, then first we have installed the PySpark and this uh, other library like for SQL. And then we have mm -hmm. import the other libraries for the data visualization. After that, we have some import some other libraries for PySpark. There and there also. And then we have started the session, first part session. We have, we have not had given any specific time, so we have given to name that name. And this is to unzip the folder. Because the data set is in the zip file, so we have to unzip it. We have used this code. And this is to a, we will come get on this because it's a function. I have to go on to the important data set. Hmm. So yes, yeah. Here we have imported data set, which is old 10.csv. And then we have also imported test data set. After that, uh, we performed can you yes, show me some data? So okay, can you show the data? So is it so where data is set. data set? So can you show so is this data set is a uh, available scale? Data set is available on this uh, UCI. You say it at repository, oh. machine learning repository. So hit mass. Mm -hmm. You can download it from here. Okay. It has uh, more than 10 billion rows. You can, mm -hmm. It has 20 so like attributes. Scroll. Just scroll down, show me the sub data, like how this look like. So can we see some data? Uh, what are the different fields and what are different row or columns are available? Okay, so. Okay, okay. Okay, you can show me the code level. So if you're not able to uh, see, uh, you can show me in this one. So these are the we have we have we are showing the null values for the, all the it's the null values. We are displaying the null values for each column, and we can see so these are the row names, and we are we are seeing that there is no null values in the column in any of the uh, rows. Mm -hmm. so this is for the cached side. By checking if there are the values in the test set, which you can see that there are no values in the test set. And then we are checking if there are any duplicate values. So, total number of rows in the data set, and total number of rows after the home data, duplicate values. So, there are no duplicate values. The same thing with the project test data set, so we get the same result. And then we will uh, rename the label with the appropriate name. And then Yes, we will create a view just like in a SQL. There is a thing called view, which does not uh, it prevents to make the changes to the original data set. In PySpark, too, we have this 
uh, method called create or replace uh, amp view, which also does the same thing. It will create a view, with data set. Mm -hmm. So here we have found the uh, correlation table. It's the Pearson correlation. And uh, here is a experiment correlation. These are the distribution of all these variables. We have some well distribution, we have some uniform distribution. Then we can see there are some values that seems like the categorical values here. And then we again have some well distribution, then uniform distribution, some categorical values we can see. Mm -hmm. And this is a visualization of the labels. And we can see that there are uh, some data imbalance between the two labels. We have more ones than the zeros. So we will balance mm -hmm. this. So what we will do is to uh, perform some SQL command. And through that, we will uh, enter sample data. And after that, we can see that both of them have the same number of labels. And then we perform minimize scaling on the mask data set, mask column, sorry. And then we do the same for the test data set. Then we prepare the whole thing for the training. Prepare data for training is a function that will that will vectorize all the columns into a single column. So all the features will be in a single column. Then all the features are in the features column, the level, level column. So we will perform the then term first ASCII part on that. And after that, we will perform the classification. And in that, we have got 60% accuracy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so what were the main thing we are trying to get? Like, accuracy means 82 percent So, what is meaning of it? So, so you are classified. 82% is a good accuracy, actually. Yeah. So it is not because I said ninety percent, but it is actually good percent percent, and then it means that the model is actually good as a good classifier. It is classifying, it is uh, differentiating between the signals and the, the uh, particles of interest and the particles that are not of interest, which are the background particles. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it means eighty two percent are your you know. Uh, obviously, a good particle. You're talking about uh, the particle that is more interested in that, and the rest of the uh, background particle that is not really needed for you know maybe abstracting yes, the yes. signal or you know. Okay. Yes. Okay. So okay. So okay. So first, explain a little about uh, what are the different things you have. You know, distribution. So you have done some distributions, or maybe uh, why you selected. You know, why this. Uh, Distributed what that distribution depicting or you know representing uh, so basically uh, interpret that part you know and uh, how we are selected like these are things we are going to select for uh, training testing so give that details as well you know okay so like how why you are selecting these columns for you know uh, this thing for training testing why you know why you are need for distribution so in uh, in distribution what are the you are trying to interpret and what you are trying to get from the distribution for it was just for you know so casing the uh and, you know just creating the graph so suppose this distribution graph right so what is need of this distribution graph and what this represent distribution the distribution graph shows the skewness of the data that if the data is skew or not so uh, here you can mm -hmm. see that there are very good uh, distributions like this mm -hmm. and there is some slightly right experience in this it's not much but it, it is still there and the uniform distribution mm -hmm. it is also good and then mm -hmm. It is also good distribution. Then this distribution, this distribution happens when the data data is that has uh, actually categorical variables. So you can see this mm -hmm. values, this kind of yeah, values. So, and then mm -hmm. this kind of this so these this mountain types distributions. And then and then uh, this distribution which with the, the data set is a the column is a continuous variable. So you can see it is mm -hmm. a bell shape, but there's some slightly deviation in this. The slope and then this is a good distribution. This is a uniform, this is a categorical variable. You can see so to identify the skewness of the data the, because if there is a skewness, there will be some biasness in the model for mm -hmm. a particular value. So, it is what we can see. Here's some right skewness. Mm -hmm. 
that's what, that's what we're looking for to restoration. And to prevent this, we can perform the scaling. Mm -hmm. Scaling can, can okay. limit it to be added to a particular, uh, particular range. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, go above and go up. Scroll up. Okay, go to the data set once more, like your. Uh, Okay, so, so what are the different fields like F0, F1, F2? So these are different fields, right? F6 and last one is mass, right? These are the, these are the properties of the particles that, that is occurred through experiment. Yeah, so the, yeah, obviously, so these are properties of the particles. So this is in our database, right? So these are yes. represented in a column. Yeah. Yes. So, so we are you try to get like, Display null value. So, like with these properties and some null value or not, right? We are trying to get or what we're doing in this uh, column. So, through this, uh, through this cell, we are uh, identifying the data set as null value somewhere. So, we have mm -hmm. this function called display null, null values, which is we have defined mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Display null values. If it takes all the columns and displays the null values for if the, any of the column has null values or not. And mm -hmm. we have this KD plot which will display the uh, distribution of each column. Mm -hmm. And we have the level bar chart, uh, though they are, I think, no bar chart in the plot that we have not used function actually, but it is still there. And there's a so for min by scaling, we have performed the min by scaling with the mass mm -hmm. in the column. And then Prepare data for training. If it prepare the data for training, it will combine all the features into a single column. Then it will the output the then it will call that new column as features. So mm -hmm. This is count the values, count the labels, the count frequency of the number of uh, numbers in a single column. If the data is mm -hmm. column is categorical, this is to find the correlation values. Mm -hmm. This is to find the correlation of the labels which with the, the label with the, each of the values. Mm -hmm. This is to extract the data set. The data set is in the GZ, compressed in GZ format. So we are to uncompress it to the destination folder, which is have not given the folder name. So it will save in the, uh, in the uh, working directory mm -hmm. after the extraction. Okay. So. So all these data you are okay, you have all downloaded this data, then you can locally try to upload it. Yes. Okay, scroll down. So this is a little bit about EDA part, right? Like throwing the data and how the things are done. Okay. Yes. So after yes. after EDA is done, okay, scroll down. So, so where you are doing feature selection? So is that needed or feature selection? I have not a pitch session in this. Okay. Scroll down. Okay. So, what are the like uh, so important point of this project, and how if somebody start working of this project? Okay. So, what they will learn? Okay. So, first explain what are the key points about this. So, uh, this is a large data set, so one can learn then from it is to how to handle the large data set and how to perform mm -hmm. the operations of the large data set using the library stack. Uh, PyS part, which is different from the PyPandas because PyPandas is limited to the small data set and it has some beneficial features for the data set, but it's not as good as the for PyS part. Um, because mm -hmm. PyS part allows it computing and also allows distribution computing mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. the benefits of PyS Pi part. So one can, if one, one wants to try their hands on PyS part, then they can start with this project too. If they are very beginner mm -hmm. and they, if they want to try using PyS part and then mm -hmm. For intermediates, so they can try uh, different uh, uh, things, different uh, their ideas. If they have any ideas to uh, to work with to pass by, can to explore some new techniques to to uh, techniques to find some new insights. Then they can try this too. Mm -hmm. That's right. And okay, it would be very interesting mm -hmm. for some people who like to work on different types of subjects. Like this is about particle physics, and for them it would be good mm -hmm. to. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that is more interesting. Like 
suppose uh, this is you know a scope like where machine learning can be applied because nobody think obviously there is all the person who are have domain knowledge you know some scientists or maybe you are working in physics physicians you know or not physicians so i'm talking about uh, scientists who are working in physics you know so they do they know like also signal processing you know we are using different satellites we are using different thing or maybe different particles you know are yes, in your you know in our atmosphere so we don't know or also maybe we can you know filter this type of maybe later we come some filter you know nowadays due, during covid so there might be some anti 95 type of filter or something like so maybe other than that these devices can be this you know help to classify these particles are you know uh, good for health this particular bad for health you know like, like that so maybe they can if there is some type of devices might be possible right so in the they are also this machine learning is going to help you know so uh, that is i think uh more interesting if this type of project and because this this is more like into going, going to help in uh you know actually affected the people how they are surrounded uh, surrounded with and what are the defaming government working right so yes sir. so so how this type of project so uh, obviously i i know you have don't have any device level you know on understanding how this can be integrated in devices but the, uh, uh, do you have any understanding like uh, obviously you can deploy this project to any uh, hosting cloud on online you know on somebody they have working on any i have you know any app developer you know who are working on we are able devices you know or any devices so based on their they can get so basically we can help you know uh, writing this code for you know everything and based on that we can help the, those person whoever you know want to need just code level right so we can help in this code level yes. and they can integrate it this okay so yeah anything else you think uh, you have want to share or maybe uh, because i also i haven't gone through this project in you know for all so i think you understand the better so if there anything else you want to share like you know, any obviously you have already explained the what and what are the most challenging parts so writing functions or training testing or or so how you are so you are using any algorithms or how we are selecting the algorithms for this one so I think I selected uh, this random forest. This is a good algorithm actually. But there are some algorithms so uh, so I like the logistic and others other algorithms. And then I select this because uh, it has many it is a, many it uses many decision trees. So I thought this would be good. Okay, yeah. okay sir. Okay, so I have done any comparative study. Yeah, obviously. Fine. Uh, I've like done, done already... some. Uh, I have scored some other algorithms as well, but they are not given to good results. So I. Decided this. I have not gone mm -hmm. some advanced like execution or others. I started with mm -hmm. this actually. Yeah, because you maybe already for the future, future, maybe future I will mm -hmm. try to use the execution and others too. But for now, I have only used the random forest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you all see, you already experience so based on the data, you will you know get to know how these things are selected, right? But yes, somebody uh, starting from beginner, right? So. So they they are not sure like which algorithm they should use, right? So how a suggestion show how they select algorithm. So first, obviously, they first there might be some comparative study, you know, two or three algorithm they first work on, then then select which are giving the more accuracy. Based on that, they, then you can you know select this algorithm giving more accuracy, right? So how basically you're selecting the algorithm? So some somebody is absolutely new, okay? So he was not aware. So how we are you know selecting any algorithm so to select any algorithm first we look at the accuracy of the model so if the accuracy mm -hmm. is good then what the model uh, is good but it is not mm -hmm. always the case because there are some other parameters too which need to measure but in, it is depends on the person at which measure it is mm -hmm. actually preference some mm -hmm. people the afn score uh, mm -hmm. some people the aoc score but in this model mm -hmm. i have copied the accuracy score of the model and then mm -hmm. there's some other good accuracy Metrics like parents' dog loss, and then mm -hmm. dog loss also is a good accuracy and mm -hmm. accuracy measure. So to check okay, the model, so then we have to we have to test every model, so what accuracy mm -hmm. they are giving, and according to what we need, and according to what the uh, metrics we are choosing. So if, if that criteria fulfills by the model, then this is a good model. That's what mm -hmm. at least what we think it's mm -hmm. good. 
okay so you are recommending at least we should you should try multiple models based on that thing yes this one giving them more accuracy but we have already selected the random forest and you are getting 80 82 plus you know 80 plus accuracy so you only try this one right you haven't try others but other algorithm can be implemented or tested right yes it will be yes mm -hmm. So that's all everyone for this uh, uh, episode. So I think this was not any in-depth uh, um, discussion and there was some point, uh, you know, uh, you are already gone through. So it, 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 it was just, you know, uh, as a code level, this was a not too much lengthy project. So, but this was very interesting, you know, this uh, project, like how these particles can be, uh, you know, obviously these are problem statement. The real scenario is how you can, use the machine and algorithm in different scenarios so i think this is only interesting part in this video moreover we can you can get the more idea and also if you need any type of help okay so our expert are always uh, here to help you also we can do hand holding or obviously or need you implement this project end to end also need to deploy this type of project so we can also help in that okay so you can also you can also uh, contact us so I hope this video is going to more helpful for you. So let's uh, uh, close this one and hope you will find some more insight from, from this. Okay. So that's all.